Okay, hey everybody. My name is Kate and I'm with Salons for Life and I'm with V. Balakrishnan. How are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. I hope you are doing well too. Yes, I am. I'm in, just for reference, I'm in Florida. And how do you prefer to be called? Bala is good. Bala. And Bala is in, what part of India are you in? Uh, as of now, I'm in the southern part of India, in Tamil Nadu, in the city of Chennai. Amazing. Isn't it amazing that we can do this? I always find it to be superlatively amazing. So we're, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Bala's upcoming salon on October 3rd, this upcoming October 3rd, and it's called Get Out of Your Own Way. So I'm going to get out of the way and have you talk a little bit about um, who you are and what you do. Okay. Um, who am I? I find many different ways of actually answering that question. I mean, on um, in an average encounter on the road, if someone asks, so, hey, you know, who are you? Then the usual answer would be, I'm an actor, or maybe I'm a teacher, or I'm an archer. I mean, these are three things tangibly I do, you know? So, but does that make me who I am? I don't know. You know, I think there is a lot of configuration going on trying to figure out and answer this question of who am I? But um, I, I, I would like to identify it as an ongoing quest and uh, I too am on the voyage of trying to find out, you know, who am I? Maybe there is no answer, but uh, the journey is interesting. The endeavor is very exciting. It reveals different faces of myself to me each and every day. And in that sense, there's a redefinition uh, and a re-identification of who am I? And that's very exciting. So I am different people on different days. I am different people, different things at the same time also. And I think these myriad dimensions together maybe constitute a particular, a particular semblance of who I am, but again, I don't have a tangible answer uh, for that. I feel the same way because I, I too am in the theater arts yeah. and I always see it as a way to not only explore my sense of self, but to expand it because every time you play something new, you learn a little bit about yourself in some way that may be in a circumstance or that you never thought you'd be in and how you would respond and that through the lens of another character. And I find that to be very liberating. And in your um, description of, of the event and also in the work that you do, you talk about performance as a tool for liberation. And I'm, I'm curious as, as to your thoughts on that. Uh... Yes, I mean, for me, one of the uh, saddest things which has possibly happened with the concept of play and with the concept of viewing that play, which is theater, is its commercial aspect, which might be an absolute truth in today's time, you know, and uh, with artists also demanding as to why they should not be paid, etc. But I believe that theater and play was never meant to be a profession. It was an integral part of our evolutionary process. It was something that we indulged in as people, as people communing with each other, belonging to a particular cluster. It is something which just helped us to evolve, be with each other, imitate each other and grow together. But somewhere along the line, as we kind of constructed ourselves into social entities. We kind of boxed ourselves into, in, into identifying ourselves in terms of caste, color, creed, countries, etc. I think we lost the sense of play. And that sense of play also started being manipulated in order to serve larger vested interests. And when as human beings, we lose the sense of play, we start getting into this very um, strong disservice to ourselves. So I believe that we should use the craft of theater, our inherent ability and need to talk, perform, narrate, and share as a tool today to liberate ourselves. And by this word liberation, what I mean is I want, I want myself and for those who engage with me to explore that intuitive, instinctive, impulsive, 
imaginative sphere of living when we were absolutely free and did not have to depend on social, moral, and ethical laws and codes in order to understand and comprehend how should I behave? How should I respond? It needs to be intuitive. And this intuitive behavior is something which can be set free by that same play. And that is what I want to explore. I absolutely love that. And I think it takes away the sort of stage fright that people can sometimes feel um, when they say, oh, I have to perform or I have to share something. Um, and I love how you say like, you know, performance is integrated into our psyches because it's how we evolve to communicate and as people and how we see ourselves in the shared collective myths of humanity in general and not just cultural. Um, and I think people sometimes when they come to a salon, they feel sort of a barrier of, well, I'm not a performer, so I don't want necessarily to perform or share. And while I understand that, I think it's really nice to hear um, you say that we all are inherent performers because we all are inherent intuitors and listeners and responders too. So what can people expect when they, when they come to the salon? Um, I... I, I, I think I am only going to work with people on one thing, that is, is it possible for us to be in the moment? Is it possible for us to belong in the moment, respond to things as and when they are occurring, and not rely upon a particular kind of stereotypical response? Is it possible for us to free ourselves from those shackles from those rules and regulations and historical baggage that we carry and just be ourselves and do what that particular moment inspires in us. To be in the moment is what I am uh, going to explore with all the people who are going to be there in the salon. And this being ourselves and responding in the moment I want it to take as many different shapes as it can, different articulations that it can. And uh, I'm going to explore with a few well-known uh, stereotypical articulations. I'm going to work on embodiment. I am going to work on us exploring our true inner selves through words. You know, you know sometimes when you tell people that let's sit down and uh, create some poetry, it comes with a baggage. Oh my God. I can't even rhyme words. How I'm not a poet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a poet. I can't write poetry. But we speak poetry every moment of our lives. I mean, the way we live, the way we strive and endeavor in everyday life is nothing short of poetry because it does not belong to the banal parameters of uh, you know, the expected realism, but it extends itself into super realism. Sometimes it gets into heightened realism and we are living those lives every day. We see these things unfold before our eyes. We, we experience them in terms of uh, emotional states. So I just want to explore these and see whether we can allow an articulation and see what it means to be an intuitive person, return to our primordial state you know, where the only thing that we were relying upon was our intuition, our impulsive behavior to just exist and coexist. So why not explore that today? Maybe it is a self-healing process, which can possibly free us from so many of these anxieties and stress and uh, aftermaths of traumatic experiences that occur because we have lost that sense of play. Mm. And of course, here I want to reiterate that uh, one is not claiming to be introducing some kind of a therapy or some kind of an, uh, you know, a medical process, but just the very simple process of play, which we associated with when we were young, when there was space around us, when there was freedom to engage with peers. And why can't we enter into that exploration once again and see whether it allows us the same kind of freedom or liberation? Absolutely. It, one of the central tenets um, that we say at almost every salon is for people to come as they are. And that's really hard to do. I, and I, I think you were touching on this with all of the layers of social conditioning that come up as we grow up, but how that really intuitive play is our, is our natural state. And I know when, when I went to theater school, 
it was really hard to strip down those those layers so um I want people to know like it takes time and practice but the hardest part is just showing up and giving it a go you know and and just coming as you are and I think this sounds really lovely and especially in a in a COVID laced world where people had to go inside and not talk and engage with other people and now it's starting to re-emerge again I think this is a really useful thing especially as people see hey maybe I wasn't as happy as what I was doing pre-COVID and I want to introduce something new and I think this novel of uh, this notion of uh, novel intuitive play is so important moving forward so I'm I'm really looking forward to it so am I Thank you so much, Bala, for, for sharing what you do. And I'm really inspired now to go do some of my theater work that I have and with this sense of play. And I'll be there. It's October 3rd, Sunday, October 3rd. It'll be 9.30 uh, a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then 7 to 9.30 or, uh, seven yeah seven to nine thirty p.m ist nice. so wherever you are in the world uh it should be ac- accessible time wise and of course it's coming to you on zoom so you can do it from the comfort and safety of your own home um thank you so much bala i'll see you then thank you take care have a good day bye-bye